We're now going to talk about triple integrals in spherical coordinates. Now, spherical coordinates are similar to polar and cylindrical coordinates, but just a tiny bit trickier. So Cartesian coordinates x, y, and z correspond to spherical coordinates rho, theta, and phi. And they're defined as follows. So if we draw the Cartesian axes, x, y, and z, as usual, suppose we have a point x, y, z. Now we can draw a line from this point to the origin, or line segment, and the length of that line segment is rho. So rho is sort of a three-dimensional analog of r in polar coordinates. Okay, now given rho, to completely specify our point, we need two more numbers. And the first of these is phi, and this is the angle which the line segment we just drew makes with the z-axis. And the remaining coordinate is theta, and theta is just the same thing as in cylindrical coordinates. So we drop a perpendicular to the xy plane, that goes to the point x, y, zero. We draw a line between that point and the origin, and the angle that that line makes with the x-axis is theta. Okay, now here are the formulas to convert between Cartesian and spherical coordinates. So first, we can draw a horizontal line up here from our point to the z-axis. So this goes to the point zero, zero, z. The length of this horizontal line is r, as in um, um, cylindrical coordinates. And the height of this little piece of the z-axis is z. And this is a right triangle. So from this right triangle, we see that z equals rho cosine phi. And also we see that r equals rho sine phi. And r is the same as this length of this line segment down here. And then we know that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So that tells us that x equals rho sine phi cosine theta and y equals rho sine phi sine theta. So if you're given rho, theta, and phi, this is how you get x, y, and z. And the trickiest thing here is when you're writing these to make sure that your thetas look different from your phi's. So a phi has a more or less horizontal slash through it, and a theta has, sorry, th the phi is a more or less vertical slash through it, and the theta has a horizontal line in the middle, which doesn't go outside. Okay, and you can go the other way by noting that rho is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now what are the ranges of these coordinates? Well, so we're going to require that phi goes from zero to pi, okay? So, so phi equals zero corresponds to the positive z-axis. Um, and phi equals pi corresponds to the negative z-axis. And we'll also only consider rho greater than or equal to zero. So rho is the distance from the origin. Okay, so if rho is fixed and positive, then the set of points for a given fixed rho is a sphere. And then theta corresponds to longitude. And the coordinate phi is equivalent to latitude, but it's on a different scale. Because the usual latitude coordinate, the north pole is plus 90 degrees, and the south pole is minus 90 degrees, which is sort of unfair to the southern hemisphere for it to always be negative. But in spherical coordinates, the north pole is zero and the south pole is pi. So the southern hemisphere is bigger in spherical coordinates. 
Okay, so that's spherical coordinates. And now let's talk about how to integrate using spherical coordinates. So let's look at the analog of a box in spherical coordinates. So this will be a set E consisting of points with spherical coordinates rho, theta, and phi, where rho, say, goes between A and B, uh, theta goes between alpha and beta, and phi, let's say, goes between C and D. So let me try to draw a picture of this. It's a little tricky to draw, but, but here's a Here's the sphere where rho equals b. Okay, so this is the outer sphere. Right? And then on this outer sphere, we have sort of an analog of a rectangle. So it looks sort of like this. OK, so here is the, this edge is where phi equals c, and this lower edge is where phi equals d, and this left edge is where theta equals alpha, and this right edge is where theta equals beta. And now we sort of go in to, and this is the hard part to draw, we go in to this sphere of radius a. So it's sort of like carving a pumpkin here. You, you sort of take a knife and you make four sort of straight cuts through your pumpkin to carve out a little chunk like this. So that's this that's the spherical coordinates version of a box. So the inside the inner sphere here is where rho is equal to a. Okay, anyway, so what's the formula for an integral? So the triple integral over e of a function f with respect to volume is the integral as phi goes from c to d and theta goes from alpha to beta and rho goes from a to b of f and now there's a new magnification factor which in spherical coordinates is rho squared sine phi and then we have d rho d theta d phi. So here's our new magnification factor. I'll explain in a minute where this comes from. And since this is the analog of a box, you can do the integral in any of six possible orders. So you can integrate using the other five orders. Okay, so we'll see examples of this soon. And now let me explain where the magnification factor comes from. So the magnification factor is what? Well, we want to look at the volume of a small spherical box. Okay, so we have a spherical box with sides delta rho, delta theta, and delta phi. So that means a spherical box, as in the previous page, where the difference between the largest and smallest values of rho is delta rho, the difference between the largest and smallest values of theta is delta theta, and also phi varies by delta phi. And we want to divide this volume by the product of delta rho, delta theta, delta phi, and take the limit as the size of the box goes to zero. 
and that's going to be the magnification factor. Okay, so let's figure out what this is. So let's draw a spherical box, a small spherical box. So it's going to look something like this. And when delta rho, delta theta, and delta phi are small, this is going to be pretty close to a rectangular box. The sides will be approximately straight. Right. So the origin is over in the left somewhere. So somewhere far away over here. All right. So here's the origin. And this, this length is rho. And this part of the box comes from increasing rho. So its length is delta rho. Now the z-axis is up here. And we're making an angle of phi with the z-axis. Now, this side of the box comes from varying phi. And since we're at a distance of rho from the origin, its length is not delta phi, but it's rho times delta phi. So this length is rho times delta phi. And this third side of the box comes from varying theta. But its length is not delta theta, we have to multiply delta theta by the distance to the z-axis. So remember, if we go straight to the z-axis like this, then this distance is rho times sine phi. So the length of this side of the box is that times delta theta. So this length is rho sine phi delta theta. So we conclude that the volume of the box is approximately the product of these three numbers. It's only approximate because this is not a perfect rectangular box. The sides are a little bit curved. But when delta rho, delta theta, and delta phi are small, it's a good approximation. So it's approximately delta rho times rho delta phi times rho sine phi delta theta. And when we multiply this out, we see two rows and a sine phi. So I have rho squared sine phi, and then the product of the delta. So delta rho, delta phi, delta theta. And when we divide by the product of the deltas, we see our magnification factor. And um, a little later in the course, we'll see a sort of more systematic way of calculating magnification factors like this, so that we don't have to draw these sketchy pictures of curvy boxes. But this is our explanation for now.